I have been feeling a certain degree of hostility. To say the thing he truly feels. Isn't this the point where you make some mysterious prediction about my destiny? Do you got to trust yourself on this one, Shadow? You can count on it. The record I took the blow. Ricky, Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for talking to me for American God Season 3. You look like an American God. <laughs> you just look uh, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun being a British American God. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of pressure in the gym, and my diet sucks. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's all for the greater good. You look great, man. It's all for the vanity. It's all for TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Shadow Moon this season, he moves to Lakeside, Wisconsin to hide is he deciding on uh, whose side he's going to be on, humanity or the gods? Um, well, he's kind of that, that he's kind of stuck in the middle, to be honest. You know, he's just found out that his father is a god, that Wednesday's his father. And so what does that mean for him? You know, where Shadow's problem in life has always been, how does he fit into society? Where does he fit in? And he thought he found that with Laura and then she died. And then he found out that Wednesday had her killed. So in season three, you kind of have Shadow who really does not want to, be a part of any of that world you know he, he he found out that Laura was having an affair so he's kind of distant with Laura Wednesday is his dad and killed his wife no matter how he feels about Laura so he's kind of shunning Wednesday as well and then we find him in Lakeside this kind of this town where he's hiding from the police and the FBI because he's still a wanted man so you know he's growing his hair his beard out he's in hiding he's just trying to assimilate he's trying to just he's trying to be invisible you know and until he kind of figures out who he is and where he, you know, where he stands in this world, he can't really take a side. You know, I, I guess he's on his own side this season. And you really see that with his strong choices. He's very much more proactive and making his decisions. And that power struggle with Wednesday really starts to flip into his favor where he decides what he does. You know, when Wednesday asks questions, it's Shadow's turn to, to deny the answers. So what you're saying is Shadow Moon's destiny, it's really revealed this season. Um, yeah, yeah, to be honest, like, yeah, look, looking at the season as a whole, he really, really kind of takes control of his life. And, and really, uh, we start off, obviously, he's in hiding and he's shunning his destiny. He doesn't want any piece of, of the gods and the war and, and Wednesday. Um, but you can only run from destiny for so long. And, you know, we will find out which side he chooses. And there's a new sheriff in the town of Lakeside, too, isn't there? <laughs> a new sheriff. <laughs> Oh my god, like so we've got some fantastic new characters and in Lakeside it's basically a whole new cast. It's my favorite part of the book. It's it flips into this murder mystery and you kind of have Eric jo Eric Johnson um who plays Chad Mulligan. You got Julia Sweeney as Hinzelman and you have Leela Lauren who plays Marguerite who may or may not be a love interest. <laughs> but um it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And finally, we see Shadow on camera with other humans. He's only ever been surrounded by gods. And so it's been fun to kind of interact with these fantastic characters and add a bit more human elements. Um, and there's definitely a lot more humor, a lot more fun and comedy in Lakeside. But then we also understand that there may be a dark underbelly to the town. Well, Ricky, congratulations on season three. I can't wait to binge it. And uh, you have a great holiday. And uh, come visit us in Las Vegas sometime. We'd love to have oh. you. I will do. I will do. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Iti day, Bruce. Good morning. How are you? Very right. well, thank you. That's an awesome background. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. I have to do a junket style, don't I? This is a yeah, junket yeah. for American gods. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, Bruce, let's begin with you. Uh, how is the ongoing war between deities, both old and new, going? That's an interesting question. Um, as far as the new gods are concerned, things are going pretty well. They're still gaining a lot more worship, but some of their key pieces on the on the enemy side of the board have disappeared. So at the start of season three, they don't know where Wednesday is, they don't know where Shadow is, and they're still trying to recruit some more heavy hitters to come to their side, not naming any names. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've got their work cut out for them. So they're very motivated to get some stuff done quickly at the start of the season. And Yatide, this season you're grappling with Tech Boy. Anything you can share with us? <laughs> um, okay, one thing I can say is that uh, you might be surprised at the things they have in common. Uh, there are things that are uh, mirrored and 
there will be a lot of uh, joyful, uh, again, surprises along the way. That we, much I can say. I know there's not much we can tell, can we? <laughs> Uh, and Bruce, uh, Tech is dealing with Mr. World this season? Well, yes and no. Tech is dealing with, I would say, the world. So yes, Mr. World, but um, just... So one of the what great things about the season with in terms of world is that we get to bring in so many other people to kind of push into how world can reform themselves. So we have Dominic, Dominic Jackson, we have um, Danny Trejo, as well as Crispin Glover. Um, so the worlds, I get to play with all of them. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm re I really get spoiled. I have a, I have a great time this season. It's, it's a lot of fun. That sounds so exciting. And yeah. uh, Yithide, was it important or have you read all of Neil Gaiman's books? Is that something important for the actors for to get a feel of the character? Uh, I mean, I will say it gives uh, a lot of context and uh, just joy in general. Being a geek, getting to read Neil Gaiman's works uh, is uh, a treasure. Um, for Bilquis, I do think it gave a, a lot of wonderful background that's necessary to bring to the screen and to uh, then explore a lot of the nuances um, that come with being a goddess of love, uh, that come with being, you know, the queen of Sheba. So um, I'm very lucky that Neil is such a large part of this show. And uh, Bruce, finally today, uh, it's been quoted that the struggles of gods and the people in season three of American Gods are the struggles of America. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's a very pertinent quote. Again, just hearkening back to um, Neil, I think it's really a testament to his writing that now, you know, 19 years after he wrote the book, the issues and the, the sentiments and the feelings of these deities are still echoing maybe even more prevalently today than they were then. Um, and that's the wonderful thing about all the characters, the gods, they're not abstracted humans, they are, they're distilled humanity. They're like, yeah, no, that's the best way I can put it. So yeah, it's a testament to Neil's writing, but some of the issues, indeed, pretty much all of the issues are still relevant today. Well, Bruce, Itide, thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to watch the entire season of American Gods 3. Thank you so much and uh, happy holidays. Thank hey, you. thanks, thanks to you, mate. Neil, good morning from Las Vegas. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello you know, from the Isle of Skye in Scotland. <laughs> oh, wow. Wonderful. Never been to Scotland. I'd love to go sometime. The last time we spoke was the Coraline TV junket. Can you believe that long ago? <laughs> it's a long time ago. So it's good to get back in front of you again. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Uh, well, new showrunner, new season, new attitude. Rumor has it you're very pleased with American Gods season three. I really am. Um, and, and it, it, I think, you know, for, for anybody who wants to know what it, anybody who's followed American God so far and is like, okay, what's it going to be like now? The proof is in the pudding. Um, I was holding my breath until the first episode of the season came through when I was sent a cut of it and I got to watch it and go, oh, this, this is American Gods. And it feels, um, it feels like an adventure. It feels like it pulls you through. Ricky Whittle as Shadow Moon is now absolutely front and center as our hero, as our protagonist. Um, it has, it's back to the book in a lot of ways, but it also has taken all of the things that the previous showrunners, previous actors, um, previous writers have brought to American Gods. And that's part of it too. So I'm really proud of it. And it's been quoted, the struggles of the gods and the people in season three of, of American Gods is also the struggles of America. I think that's kind of true. I mean, I, I definitely had no idea writing a novel over 20 years ago that it would feel like it was talking about now. That the idea of writing a story about a country made of immigrants, writing a huge and diverse cast, um, that all of that kind of thing would actually play out and become important. Um, also, I think the, the crash between old and new has never felt as huge and crashy as it does right now in 2020 when you're at home baking your sourdough bread, but you're communicating with everybody you knew on a computer screen. Um, this idea of, of 
who we are, when we are, as a nation, as people, and in time. Um, that American Gods is out talking about that makes me so happy. And I've interviewed authors, authors over the years, uh, Percy Jackson, Artemis Fowl, about their what what their works have been done from Hollywood. So I was wondering, as an author, how much control creatively have you at this point in your career? Do you have a say so? I have a lot more control than most, but I have a lot more control than most, mostly because I actually stopped being a writer for a few years to write and show run Good Omens. Um, which was, I guess, wound up being much more important than I thought it was. I did it because my, my dead friend, Terry Pratchett, had asked me to make it, so I made it. But what happened was all of the people who don't normally listen to writers suddenly looked at Good Omens and went, oh, he, he actually knows what he's talking about. Look, he can do this thing. So um, all of a sudden, I, I was no longer a person at the table occasionally sort of raising my hand and saying, oh, excuse me. Uh, people were now actually listening to what I would say, particularly about story. And that has meant, that's been really important for the stuff that we've made so far. And it's also important for the stuff that will be coming out over the next few years. And our final seconds here, season four rumors, crossing fingers. Uh, all fingers are crossed because we've got some, you know, put it this way, if we don't have a season four, uh, the end of season three is going to leave a lot of people running to buy the book to find out how it ends. Neil, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a total thrill. Happy holidays, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you, Jeffrey.